Hey there, this is Thomas Goss with a review of the latest Sibelius 7 software from the perspective of a professional orchestral composer. Sibelius 7 is more than just an upgrade. It's a massive rewrite of a program that was already working okay to begin with, and was becoming the industry standard. It's such a detailed topic, and so important to orchestrators, that I have made three videos in response. The first one, which you're viewing right now, is a pretty general rundown of the new features of the program, and some thoughts about how these changes help or hurt the process of notating your score. The second video puts the new Sibelius sound set to the test, with excerpts from actual symphonic scores. The third video is an open letter to the Sibelius programmers, with some feedback for them about what actually needs fixing in the program from my viewpoint as a busy professional. I've been a Sibelius user since the very first version hit the market over a decade ago. The year 2000 was a huge one for me. I had just bought a house in San Francisco, and I had a huge stack of commissions. I ended up composing about 10 works that year, plus a film score. That added up to about two and a half hours worth of music, a lot of it for dance companies and mixed chamber ensembles. Up to that time, I had been using a very clunky program called Score since 1987. It was only available on PC, and it was very clumsy to operate. You had to type in a row of pitches, then a list of time values, then slurs, then dynamics, and so on. The output was superb, but it was obviously for typographers, not for busy composers. With the amount of work I had taken on, I simply did not have time to score all of my commissions with that old program, and I was getting sick of my old 486 PC. I had some friends who were Finale users, and that seemed faster and more elegant, yet the learning curve was intense. So I bought a new iMac, and decided to try that new program Sibelius. One of the major selling points was the educational discount. That made a big difference to a professional musician with a hit-and-miss salary. But the biggest factor was that Sibelius had a very quick learning curve. With all those commissions on my plate, I needed a program that worked simply and quickly and didn't require endless calls to tech support every week. And that's what I got. The best thing of all was that it combined every way of working into one easy interface. I could sketch, I could noodle, I could improvise, and I could just type out or play immediately what was in my head and get it down right away. It wasn't quite as fast as writing in pencil, but it was worth the small delay of time because my sketch could be shaped into a final score right on the screen. I didn't have to score two or three separate drafts. All these basic features represented a huge step forward for my creative process as a composer, and enabled me to take on larger and larger amounts of work. And as I got more and more orchestral commissions over the next few years, I watched Sibelius get more sophisticated with each new version, easier to use but far greater in creative capacity. I scored films, created multimedia works, reduced big scores, expanded little scores, wrote crossover arrangements, and kept on top of a busy schedule as an orchestrator and composer, even while being tied up in other big distractions like changing countries or running a performing arts academy. If not for Sibelius, half of what I've achieved in the past decade would not be possible. So as a full-time orchestrator and composer, I have a professional interest in how this program is evolving. I need it to succeed, and what's more, I need for their improvements to be things that speed up my working process, not slow it down. Time is an incredibly important factor. Any small delay in working gets multiplied into hours, then days of wasted time over the course of a year's work. When Sibelius came out with their magnetic vertical placement feature in version 6, my reaction was not, what a great advancement, it was, what took you so damn long? All I could think of was all the time I'd wasted for the past 10 years in readjusting dynamics and slurs, and how the Sibelius programmers could have addressed this obvious need years ago. That's why I have a mixed reaction to the new massively upgraded Sibelius 7. On the one hand, the revamp makes it easier than ever for a new user to learn the program. Features are available and easy to find ribbons, and it's a snap to put together a score from the first day. On the other hand, ahem, certain other features that a lot of us long-time hardcore professionals rely on in our daily work have been buried in hard-to-find places. The makers of Sibelius are literally asking their faithful professionals to adjust to a broadened but highly altered version of their software for the sake of winning over a larger market. The question is, is it worth it?
After using this program for the past few weeks, my answer is yes, with some strong reservations. If you're just getting into software-based notation programs, then by all means, Sibelius 7 is a program that you can build a career with. But if you're already familiar with Sibelius 6, be ready for some big changes. Let's look at the biggest of these changes first, the new look of the program. Nearly all the previous menus have been replaced by a multiple tab interface called a ribbon and a quick start menu. Each tab contains a variety of easy to access functions. You can flip notes, switch parts, edit input devices, and many more functions, all from the note input tab. Other tabs include play, text, appearance, layout, parts, and so on. This is the upgrade of most benefit to new users, especially those switching over from other software like Finale. An entry-level composer can really benefit from the notations ribbon, which has key and time signatures, clefs, lines, symbols, and bar lines all on one menu. Also, the almost completely useless parts window developed in Sibelius 4 has been replaced by a menu that makes part extraction and editing a lot simpler. But for me, all this repositioning was mostly a bit of a headache. With some serious digging, I eventually found most of the features I had relied on to score a big project. I was very puzzled by the keyboard, navigator, and mixer windows being relegated to an inconspicuous little menu called Panels at the end of the last ribbon. In fact, for an orchestral composer, or any kind of serious composer, you can't do anything on Sibelius without these widgets. Also, a very confusing development, they went to the trouble of putting playback controls on the new play ribbon without including a timeline or a tempo slider. These are available on the original transport panel, but once you've got that open, what do you need controls for on the menu ribbon? Some more thought is definitely needed here. The new layout has been designed with laptop users in mind, with smaller screens, and the need to access functions without changing windows. That's something I can understand, as I most commonly sketch and do low-level composing using just my laptop. With the new touchpad on my MacBook Pro, I can scroll quickly through the different menus on the ribbon. While this is great for laying out all the functions across the screen, it does take up space, about 18% of the horizontal view of your score. You can hide the ribbon if this is a problem, or work in full screen mode, or both. I find myself doing extreme close-ups quite often in Sibelius, and the new zoom slider is very helpful, especially for taking screenshots at exactly the right proportions needed to make these videos. A drawback is that in exchange for the slider, the programmers have eliminated the ability to type in your own zoom percentage. I liked that, and the program seems less friendly without it. Another thing that makes the program feel a little alien is the lack of menu commands in the root menu. Now that the ribbon is capable of doing so much, why bother with the root menu, I'm sure the thinking went. But honestly, no open recent command makes for a strange interface on any program. One way to open recent files is to use the file menu on the ribbon, which I admit is very slick. I like the easy access to functions here. The print submenu is particularly well laid out. But I don't like the whole unsaved dot thing happening after you print a file. That is completely unnecessary and should be fixed in the next revision. It's very important for us composers to know exactly when and what we have saved. We don't need things like this which muddy our sense of what we've just done. The main way that Sibelius 7 wants you to access your scores is through the quick start menu. This opens a window with training options, news, export options, a menu for creating a score, and of course, access to recent scores. This is also pretty slick and easy to navigate. I like the graphic layout of scores in the recent menu, and the systematic options for creating a new score. But there are problems. Quick Start lacks a keyboard shortcut. This is an oversight of monumental proportions, seeing as how this is a feature that they have designed for quick access to your data. Also. Once it's opened, if it gets covered by other windows, then the menu command neglects bringing it to the front, making you search and search through open file windows. Lastly, if you have other applications running, Quick Start takes forever to load. So really, this new layout feels like a work in progress with much still to fix.
Sibelius used to run on a multiple document interface, meaning one set of controls applied to several different open documents. Things could get confusing when you were cycling between scores, and sometimes the system itself would get confused and crash. To fix this, Sibelius 7 now uses single document interface, meaning each document has a separate set of controls, making it easier to switch between docs. This may not seem like a big deal to the casual user, but it's a huge help to a professional composer when editing orchestral parts, transcribing scores, or doing cut and paste on arrangements. This change has my complete support. We've needed it for a while. For years, Sibelius has used Times New Roman as the default font for tempos, titles, expression text, and performance directions. Now they have changed to a font called Plantin, which has a closer look to the classic expression text fonts of music publishers. It's not a perfect match, but it has a more artistic look and it's much easier on the eye for a sight-reading musician. Apparently, the font has been licensed from Monotype Imaging Limited. I'm a bit curious about the extent of this license. Does this mean that Sibelius users are free to publish their works using this new font? Or will we have to get permission from Monotype Imaging? That should have been made clear in the documentation. Before we move on, let's not forget that the beautifully shaped dynamic signs commonly used today are merely a form of bold type for the older font styles of classical era music printers. While this plantain font is nice, I really think that Sibelius should just bite the bullet and design their own font based on the old type directly. That would really make our scores look as professional as possible without any compromises. There are some other cool new features that are worth mentioning. One is multiple CPU load sharing. Sibelius will spread the workload across multiple cores, keeping hangups and crashes to a minimum. But be warned, they still happen. I found that it wasn't worth running Sibelius 7 playback unless I'd shut off all other RAM-hungry applications and rebooted my system. You can also add longer slurs in input mode, and keep the same tuplet values going with their sticky tuplets feature. That is a huge time saver when you're on a roll. Other goodies include advanced typography and importing graphics by dragging and dropping. These changes and some others are not all that incredible, but a good example of polishing up the product. But as you'll see if you watch video 3 of this series, the Sibelius programmers left a lot of greatly needed changes by the wayside. Certain long-running problems have yet to be addressed, such as lack of vertical page justification, reduction of ledger line width, copying triplets, and general funkiness of lines. These all represent huge time wasters. The more you get into Sibelius, the more you'll realize how irritating they are. So my rating of the new version is about a 7 out of 10. Sibelius made some changes to grab a bigger market share, but they didn't take their long-time high-end professional users like me into account, at least not with the kind of intuition that makes me feel optimistic. I know that I will eventually adjust to these changes, but the programmers haven't tried hard enough to make it worth my while. That makes me feel that they are not entirely on my side, and that's not a good thing. On the other hand, some of the architecture of the program and some new procedures are very much improved. The new layout does have some logic to it, and if the bugs are worked out, then this program could be a lot more welcoming for all users. One big upgrade in Sibelius 7 that I didn't go into is the new instrument sound set. Don't miss my next video where I put it to the test.